So here's a quick tutorial on how to make a chain uh, very quickly. Uh, I have another one on YouTube that uses MCG, but a lot, uh, you have to make the array modifier we're going to use. So if you are in 2023.2 specifically, the point .2, uh, the new array modifier is now included. So let's just take a look at doing this really quick. I'm going to uh, simply go in and make a rectangle, not a box, a rectangle. And uh, I'm going to turn that, uh, create that, and I'm going to then go in and say rendering and enable it and generate mapping coordinates on in case I need mapping. We'll leave the sides at this. Well, maybe we'll take it down just for um, uh, speed reasons. There really isn't much reason to have it that high. Auto smooth, let's crank that up. Well, 180 should be the top, but that doesn't look like it's clamped off. Um, and then, of course, we need to uh, worry about the thickness. So we're starting to get a, a thickness going here in the uh, in it. Uh, but what we also want is obviously round uh, rounded corners and whatnot. So uh, when you're dealing with a rectangle, you have a corner radius and you can simply round it off. Now you want to be careful because you go too far, it will do this. You can see it's starting to mess up. So we want to take these ones that are at this edge here and we want to bring them up so that just they start to meet. And then we can think about our uh, thickness of our chain. Now, the next thing we can do is then we're not going to collapse that or do anything else. Leave it as a rectangle. I'm going to add the new array modifier, not the array tool, the array modifier. And it is going to create a chain for us. Um, at that point, then we need to do some uh, rotations around an axis. So we're going to go around the uh, x axis, but we want to be able to rotate each and every one of them a little bit and have them, uh, you know, sort of going off as they go. So we want it to. Uh, um, uh, to rotate uh, a little bit each on each one. To do that, we need to set the rotation from all to incremental. And it's along the x-axis. If we look at uh, Alt, right click. Uh, if we look at the local axis, it's along the x-axis in this case. So we can rotate these so that they offset. Now you've got other options in here for alternating, for instance. Uh, and that might be a better solution um, to, uh, to be able to rotate them. Uh, and you can see they, they rotate off and so alter, alternating and you can see it's starting to roll around the spline. That's going to happen. I'm just going to say 90 on alternating. Um, there's random incremental, so that will uh, randomly do it. We may not want to quite go down that road. I'm just going to say alternating for now. And then we want to mess it up a little bit. So then I can use the uh, the random and just kind of randomize. They're also running into each other, so the offset needs to be pulled down. And we can now pull that down. And so you say, okay, it's starting to look like a chain. Let's then create a spline. And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use the uh, freehand spline and just draw the spline down wherever. Now you'll see that that spline is being drawn by default now because we turned it on uh, with the renderable on. We don't need that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to draw that going over itself. Okay, so it's coming back on itself. I'm going to go to the um, uh, back to our chain and I'm going to add the path deform modifier. So now we've got path deform. I'm going to say path deform on the chain and it's looking like it's doing something really crazy. So what we want to do is we want to find first the correct axis is X and you'll notice it's deforming each link. That's not something we want. So we can say pre um, preserve form by element and now each element is on that uh, chain and then what we need to do is go back down to the array modifier with show and result turned on and we can turn up the amount of chain links we have and it will just you know create us a chain now you'll notice the chain is running back into itself here and we could go and fix that but an easy way to fix that is actually by adding uh, a modifier that is going to um, uh, you know, correct it for us, and it's called spline overlap. Now, spline overlap is going to look at the overlap and uh, how much it's going to happen. So we can dial up the thickness that we want, and you kind of think of the chain as having an overall sort of cylindrical thickness you could kind of go with. 
Um, and then that will make it lay back over itself. We can then play around with the drape and that's kind of how much it is relaxing over it completely. Um, so, you know, maybe a chain needs to be something like that. It looks pretty good. So everything now is still 100% procedural. We can go ahead and do whatever we want to this and uh, we can make it, you know, look, you know, fairly natural. Now the chain's not laying flat. I know that, um, but it's not bad. And again, for most shots, it's going to look pretty good. Now, if you build the chain uh, with a spline in another way, you may run into problems of the, um, the spline overlap not doing what you expect. Let me show the knots. By default, the freehand spline creates a lot of knots. Well, let's say you just went about doing um, you know, a typical spline here. I'll just turn on smooth and we go ahead and we do something like this and we cross back over. Um, let's take that chain and let's just um, copy it. I'm just gonna go control V. I wanna make a copy and I'm going to drop it onto this one now. And it looks like it's too long. So let's go and take the, uh, the count down so it's something reasonable. Now I'm gonna go and take the um, spline overlap here and just drag and drop it onto this spline. You'll notice it didn't work too well. It didn't work as well. That's because it's moving the knots on the spline and there aren't enough knots on the spline here. So down below the spline overlap, I'm going to add normalize spline modifier. Now what the normalize spline modifier does is it allows you to be able to add more spline uh, knots. So if I you know, turn it off here, the show spline, show knots, I can turn it on here and we can take a look at them. Actually, it's not coming on for some reason. Oh, probably because this is turning it off at the top of the stack. So I'll put that back on. Um, so you can see I can add more. OK, and it does when you're using the by length, you'll end up with ones close together at the end. Sometimes I'll just go to add um, by count uh, and then crank it up. And now you'll see there's more knots on the spline. Now, I wouldn't collapse this because the line and I'll just say show end result still has the ability that when I go to the bottom of the stack and let's just turn off the show knots again here. Let's go to the very bottom. Um, and take a look at it. We can see that I don't have many to adjust. So if I need to move this around and change how it works, you can see it's all working. As I move it around, it's recalculating how it overlaps. And I could easily just go and pull it back over itself. And you can see it immediately overlaps um, up above it in the stack. So that allows us to have really dynamic solution uh, for the um, for it. So we could also then uh, take the line and say create line. And you can see it automatically stepping over. I'm going to grab all the vertices there and just put them on a smooth. So they're all on a smooth. And then I want to go ahead and uh, weld these two together uh, so that they're uh, welded together. And uh, you'll find that down here. And if they're not close enough, you can crack your distance up. And there you go. So now we just need to get out a sub object, in this case, one, because we are in uh, vertex mode. And then we can go back down to our array modifier and, of course, simply make our chain longer. And it looks like it's all laying over top of each other. Simple as that. There you go. So there is the uh, simple way of going ahead and um, you know, creating a chain along a spline that looks quite reasonably natural.